Hello again, and uh, welcome back. So what I had planned was I wanted to challenge myself and try to 3D print a fully working clutch out of just 3D printed parts. And this is what I decided I'd come up with. This here is a fully working, fully 3D printed clutch, with the exception of the fasteners and some bearings, but it uses 3D printed clutch discs and 3D printed parts to ultimately make a clutch, as you can see. Now what I made is called a clutch pack. This has multiple clutches inside instead of one. As you can see, there's plenty of slippage, but when I start applying friction, it's harder and harder until I just don't have enough grip. Because when you have all these discs pressing together, it actually creates a very large amount of surface area across multiple discs, rather than having one very big disc. The clutch that I made is very similar to one in like a motorcycle like this, clutch lever here, and when you pull that, it moves this lever here, and that's what activates the clutch, which is actually on this side, I'm pretty sure. Yeehaw! What I'm doing here is I'm using an angle grinder to rough up the surface of the shaft, and then I'm going to use JB Weld to mate it to the spline. I'm just going to leave it like this to harden, um, that way it doesn't like run out to the bottom or the top, because I'm pretty sure JB Weld's thin enough, and then every now and then I'll just go out and just kind of give it a turn. Basically, when building this, this is the last thing I want to be the weak point. I want everything else to break either before it, so I either want the clutch to slip or... Otherwise, I'll probably have to make a keyed kind of thing of this, but I don't really think I will. I'll probably just JB weld it and then hope it holds. Ooh, it feels like it's gonna explode. Here we have the clutch springs. I only had four of them installed out of six because it was honestly hard enough just to get the four in. I think if I was gonna put on all six, I'd have to crush in a bench vise first. Uh, and then turn in the screws. All right, so now out can come the pressure plate, but it does simply just push on the clutch plates there. Anyways, have this taken apart now. So as you can see, now you're looking at the spline and the basket, and as you can see, they do spin independently from one another. Just a bit. Oops, uh, but as you can see, it just goes on just like that. Now first I decided to test this clutch with only PLA friction discs without any kind of additives. I have it in the bench vise, but before I can do that, I actually have to cut like a key into it. Um, so let's go do that. Okay, how should I start this? Let's tighten that up. Like so. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place a mark on the basket and on the uh, the arm, I guess, this is like rod, and that'll let us know. Okay, that's really dry. Um, I'm gonna place a mark here and here. Anyways, you can see that this is marked now on the housing and on the rod, so it shouldn't move if I apply some torque. Oh, okay. It slips, but to be honest, it takes like quite a bit of force to actually get it to slip. Like how much easier is it if I lift up on it though? Oh, really easy. And then you drop it down. Actually, that's that's pretty good. Um, I mean, obviously it is slipping still, but you know, like it takes... You can hear that it is definitely the disc slipping and not something breaking, uh, but... Now it's not perfect. As you can see, it is slipping, but I was really impressed considering it's nothing but just PLA. Now, as part of a solution, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two patches of hot glue to each of the friction discs. You can see there's the hot glue that I've actually added to it, and I've kind of faced them off to be even. But there's enough that when there's not very much contact, as you can see, it slips just fine. But when you start adding pressure, you can definitely feel that there's a lot more grip coming from the uh, hot glue. So it does work under pressure. All right, welcome back to the garage. Um, I have the thing put in uh, this time, the clutch. And as you can see, I'm going to line up those two lines again, just like that. So, uh, let's see. Oh, actually, like, pretty good. Um, I feel like if I turn any harder, I'll break something. Like, you can see that, like, rod is actually kind of winding up, even. Like, you know, actually, I'm, I'm putting, like, a lot of force into that. Like, if I try really hard, it'll, like, start slipping. Um, now let's see if it'll work just as fine before. Pull up, and yeah, it's no friction at all, and then you drop it. Tons of friction. Yeah, that's a pretty good success. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go back and I'm gonna add, like, hot glue to the other discs. 
and then see if that like can further improve it it probably could but i'm really satisfied with that yeah this would be really useful for something that i have planned in the future as you can see it was a huge success it took a lot of force to begin to get it to slip and that wasn't even when it was fully assembled now this is only kind of a prototype this isn't the finished design but if i ever actually decide to use this for an application such as putting it on like an engine what I'm going to do is I'm going to add more friction discs and actually add more hot glue to each of the discs, as well as add all six springs next time. And I think that will make a very strong unit. Anyways, that's all for, anyways, that's all for today. See ya.